Jason has another question. Has the ghost of Marcion affected our concepts of the afterlife? That is an interesting question. I don't know if Marcion has necessarily. Uh, from what I have studied about Marcion, it was not so much the concept of the afterlife as it is really this life and how to live according to God's commandments, according to God's uh, desire. So uh, great question, but I, I don't know that he's necessarily affected that. I, I would suggest that some of the doctrines of the early church uh, have affected it. I, there, just this thing called Gnosticism uh, has affected it. Uh, there is a document called the Apocalypse of Peter. It's an interesting read. Um, it's a very interesting read. Uh, it, it's not a very nice read, though, to be honest, because there they have people that are being um, tormented in the most explicit, graphic, disgusting kind of ways. Uh, not just fire, but all kinds of really nasty stuff. And it's interesting when you compare those ideas of Gnosticism, you don't really find those in Scripture. But what you, where you do find those, if you go all the way back to the Book of the Dead in, uh, e in Egyptology or in Egyptian texts, uh, there you'll find that the Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians, had a rather um, uh, robust uh, perspective of what happened to somebody. Of course, this was probably in the New Kingdom, so probably around uh, 1100, 1200 BC, somewhere in there, uh, maybe as late as seven, eight hundred, something like that, uh, BC. Uh, so again, the theologies do change over time, but but that is something that we do find really in ancient Egypt more so than the Bible. Uh, so, uh, and let me just say one more thing about the concept of hell. When Jesus talks about it in Mark chapter 9, he says that it's better to enter into life, you know, missing your hand, than to enter it into Gehenna, uh, you, know, you know, with everything intact, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. And he's quoting from Isaiah 66. In Isaiah 66, Isaiah 66, uh, verse 21 Isaiah 66, he says, um, he says, for as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your descendants of your name remain, and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord, and they shall go forth and look upon the corpses of the men who have transgressed against me, for their worm does not die. And their fires aren't quenched. They shall be an abhorrence to all flesh. All right. So the, the word here uh, is poglim. All right. Poglim or, or pogel uh, or piglim, excuse me. Piglim. This is a dead body. It's a corpse. Right. It's lifeless. There's no life at all in this, uh, in, in this body. And that's what the word piglim is all about. It's a lifeless body. It's a corpse. So. So the people that will go forth and look, they will look upon corpses. They're not going to look upon people who are being tormented, but they're going to look upon corpses. Now, the worm and the fire, they continue. But as for the, the, the corpses, these are dead. Right? There's no life in these bodies. And when it does say in the book of Revelation, concerning those who will take the mark of the beast, they are a different story, all right? If you take the mark of the beast, bad news, all right? Very, very bad news, all right? So in Revelation 14, verse 9, then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength, into the cup of his indignation. His, he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. All right, so it's kind of sandwiched, right? So the people who very specifically are going to be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb and, who, and, and whose smoke 
uh, from the torment will go up forever. And who have no rest day or night? Who are these people? The ones who take the mark of the beast and who worship his image and they receive the mark of his name. These are so worship the beast. They take uh, his mark and receive his mark and they worship the image of the beast as well. So those three things. So it's not just people that go to church on Sundays. Um, that's what the uh, Seventh-day Adventists suggest. Uh, you know, it's not just people that, you know, do this or that, you know, not quite according to the Torah or something like that. This is very specific, okay, very specific that this group will will suffer, okay, and it'll be not, not very good. Uh, so we don't see anything where, you know, devils and pitchforks and all that kind of stuff. Um, so great question. Thank you. Really good. 